And the idea that we're getting through here is, um, is did the did the events that the Bible say happened actually happened? And one of the things that that we have to remember when we're looking at the creation, people always say something along the lines of this. Well, maybe maybe Genesis isn't actually trying to tell us what really happened at creation. It's just trying to tell us that God did the creating. In other words, it's not historical. It's just more of just trying to show God. The Israelites have this constant recurring theme of using actual history and giving commentary on it about how God did it. You see this in the book of Kings and Chronicles, for instance. So then the question becomes, well, how, maybe those aren't historical either. Well, as we'll show later, yes, they are definitely historical, and when you properly date them, they add up to um, all the different things that Assyria and Babylon says and all that stuff. So judging by the way that Israel saw history and judging by the way that they wrote in the Bible, chances are they believed fully, 100%, that what was said in Genesis actually happened as they wrote it. Okay, um, so keep that in mind as we're going forward. We've been looking from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, all the way through chapter 2. Um, after about verse 4 or 5, somewhere in there in chapter 2, it switches um, to a different aspect of the creation. And some people have um, assumed that these, there are two different creation accounts. So far, we've just looked at the first supposed uh, or creation account. We'll get to the second one uh, in the new year. But, uh, so, okay. We talked about last week, um, I'm sorry, two weeks ago, because last week was the making the boxes. Right. Two weeks ago, we talked about, um, well, you know, the, in, in, in schools, they're teaching us that people came from Africa, not from the Near East. So, what's up with that? And we looked at this a little bit la uh, two weeks ago, and I wanted to kind of just touch on a few things. First off, I, I brought this up kind of more in passing. I wanted to make sure you guys understood it. We are always finding older human remains um, that date back, oh, people are even older than we thought they were. Oh, people are even older than we – see what I mean? People thought for a long time that the world wasn't that old. Therefore, they didn't think humans had been around for that long. <laughs> and then they find out, hey, there has been around for a long time. Well, then they start finding evidence that puts humanity back 100,000 years and then 200,000 years. You know what I mean? And we keep finding older and older remains and more and more widespread. And so then people are coming up with two basic ideas. Humans created, uh, evolved into humans around the globe on different parts of the globe around the same time. Or they all had a common ancestor that spread out. Now, obviously, the one that believes in a common ancestor is the predominant view, but there are still people who hold the other view as well. Um, so as long as we keep finding um, human remains that keep dating older and older, we can't say for absolute certain that humanity started in Africa when we keep finding older remains. Yeah. Then there's a second issue that we're very unsure of human ancestry. Now, we as Christians aren't. We know that God created us. <laughs> Just, boop, there we are, you know, it kind of resolves that issue. But as far as um, historians and scientists and those kind, of, they're very unsure about human ancestry. Um, not everyone who doesn't believe in God believes that humans evolved from apes. I know a lot of people think that is the view of evolution. Actually, there is no one evolutionary theory. There's a bunch of different evolutionary theories, and some of them hold that humans evolved from monkeys, and some of them hold that they didn't. So that's kind of an important point there. And until they're, they're, they're even arguing among themselves. So if they're arguing among themselves, that really shows we are unsure of human ancestry. So we can't possibly say that humans evolved in Africa if we're looking for the wrong remains. Right. Let's say, for instance, we came from a monkey, this specific monkey. And this specific monkey was in Africa, for instance. Just roll with me on this, okay? Right. So obviously, if we, if we find the remains of that a monkey in Africa, we're going to say, oh, well, we have found the origins of humanity. But let's say that we came from this other monkey that wasn't in Africa at that time. It was in, um, I don't know, Turkey 500,000 years before that. Well, see what I mean? Now now we're very unsure as to where we came from because you get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So until we have the issue resolved from a scientific standpoint, not from a biblical standpoint, 
of where humans came from, you can't say for absolute certain that humans originated in Africa. Right. So there's that. Um, but as I mentioned last or two weeks ago, the flood would account for the lack of human remains in the Near East. Um, we know that before the before the Tower of Babel, before the flood, everybody on Earth lived at the same spot of the Earth. So. If there was a massive enough flood, it could very well account for that. But not only that, even if it wasn't a, a, a massive enough flood, we don't know what we're looking for or where we're looking to find it. So we can't right. possibly say it's not there for certain when there's so much out there that we haven't found. Right. I mean, it's just <laughs> – more. Yeah. That, that's, that's assuming too much. Kenneth Kitchen once said this. How, did he, how does he word it? He says, the absence of proof is not the proof of absence. And that's very true, especially in archaeology. There's a lot of things with archaeology that we have no idea. Right. So keep all that in mind when people say with absolute certainty, you know, how the Bible is contradicted. It's like, well, maybe, you know, let, maybe put a pin in that one. Um, so I did – after we talked a couple weeks ago, um, some people brought up uh, whether oh. Ken Ham believes in Ice Age. I, I did actually look that up, and absolutely, yes, Ken Ham does believe in an singular Ice Age. Yes. Um, he thinks it was due to the flood. Basically, when the flood happened, it changed the earth, um, uh, how plants and stuff were able to survive on the earth, uh -huh. uh, and it changed the atmosphere and all that. Um, I, I believe this is because he doesn't think that there was any rain until the flood. Um, so because he doesn't believe that there was any rain, therefore, he thinks that that change from all this water being there when there wasn't water before or vice versa – if I forget which, because I think you might believe in the canopy idea that the earth was surrounded in water. Not important. More of the story being when that was changed, it changed how the earth functioned and it changed the plants and therefore it caused an ice age. However, he just sees one ice age, whereas history books will probably tell you about three or four ice ages. Right. So there's that. Um, there are still a lot of people, though, conservative Christians, who believe only what the Bible says. And what I mean by that is… If the Bible doesn't describe it as having happened, it didn't happen. So, for instance, the Ice Age didn't happen because the Bible doesn't describe it happening. Dinosaurs aren't real because the Bible never describes dinosaurs. Or they say that something in the Bible is a dinosaur when it isn't. So, let's get started back in verse 6. We finished up verse 5, and I know we're going slow. Hopefully, we'll make more progress tonight. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. God made the expanse and separated the waters, which were below the expanse, from the waters which were above the expanse, and it was so. So here we see God starting the water cycle, the idea of rain and evaporation from clouds, that kind of stuff. You know, you have the separation between there's water on the ground now and water up in the sky now. There, there's a water cycle. This is very, very important because life cannot exist without water oh, yeah. so by god establishing the water cycle he's getting the earth ready for the life that's going to inhabit it he has a plan here now this makes sense because scientists tell us all these things that happened with you know the, the different the different things about how the earth just every, okay so out of the big bang everything just arranged itself and and started you know that for instance gravity began to kick in why why was gravity even a governing force out of all the chaos so out of all this chaos, it just arranged itself magically, you know. And and they're finding they're finding a lot of stuff like, for instance, the outer planets protect the Earth from a lot of asteroids. Did you know that? Wow. How crazy is that? Wow. How crazy is that? So as an asteroid and stuff comes towards the Earth, a lot of times it's afflicted from by the other planets because of the gravitational pull. Right. Stuff like that. There's just like. How crazy that this completely random thing that came from nothing, remember, nothing, and then all of a sudden everything, then arranges itself magically, like some kind of a fairy dust or some kind of nonsense, like it's never, never land. Right. And, and then, you know, you, you have it setting up its own water cycle preparing for, for life when it didn't know that there was going to be life. It, Mother Nature, for instance, didn't have this all-knowing idea of what was going on. Even evolution tells us the idea of life preserving itself, not the idea of life spawning itself. At best, evolution can do nothing more than preserve itself from complete d annihilation, but even that's li limited because right. if there was a change in, in really anything, there's not much it can do because evolution takes too long. You, you see what I mean? Like, for instance, a, a, an ice age could wipe out all life on Earth. Right. It's just, it's just, there's a lot of ifs and ifs and it's just, anyways. 
So then we get to the idea in verse 8. It says here, God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. Hebrew is a very unprecise language. What I mean by that is words can have a wide range of meaning. Wide range of meaning. I mean, it's crazy. Um, Hebrew, they, they didn't think like we think. And so a lot of words can mean a lot of different things. And then the context really is a lot of times the only thing um, that tells you how to translate something. And then even then you can translate it in numerous numerous amounts of ways. So more moral, moral stripping here, heaven as translated here isn't descriptive of um, something in the spiritual. It's more talking about sky. So heaven is more like sky. So birds flying in the heavens, you know, birds flying up in the sky. Okay, and then verses 9 through 10. Uh, then God said, Let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Now, here we see the beginning of tectonic activity. Now, if you remember, we were talking about um, the proof of a creator. And one of the things that we looked at was tectonics. And if you don't remember, that's basically the... Um, what are they called? Um, on the earth, there's these um, plates. plates. Yes, thank God, yes. There's these plates along the earth, and they cause shifting. And so the land that's on the earth is actually moving right, right now. Before yes. there was Pan Pangea, yes. you know, it was one big supercontinent. Right. And even now, the continents are still moving. It's that, that movement that allows for life on earth. You know, there's yes. so many fragile things on the earth that if one bit of it was, was even altered slightly, it just would cause Lost. complete mass death. Yeah. It's just too many coincidences here, guys. It's just too many coincidences. Anyways, um, and so, so obviously evolutionists would say, well, it, it evolved according to what was there. How do we even have the consciousness to realize how lucky we are? See, so, I mean, like, that, that doesn't really resolve the issue. Saying it just happened... Why did it just happen? See, so, I mean, like, th th there's too many, there's too many things just ignore it and say, oh, well, because that just, it just evolved for what was there. Well, how, why did it evolve? Yeah. Where did all the codes come from for DNA? I mean, it can't just appear out of thin air. Oh. See, life has to have DNA. It's, it's this, it's this, it's this tiny, tiny thing in your body that is massive in its, in its scope of, of intelligence. And life cannot exist without DNA, but DNA also cannot exist without life. So how could DNA have possibly have evolved? I mean, you have all these unanswered questions that are just not possible. Wow. It's not possible. It looks like you're itching to say something, Nicole. It's like turning on a computer. You, the computer won't just turn on. You have to push the button to yeah. turn it on. Yeah, and you know, in a book I was reading by Lee Strobel, he talked about this. He said, if... If you walked along the sand and you saw a, a sand castle made, it would be perfectly logical to assume that somebody had built that castle. Right. Because intelligence, only intelligence can spawn intelligence. So DNA is definitely intelligence, like a language, inside of our bodies. Yeah. So we come to an intelligence and we say it wasn't created by an intelligence. I'll do you one even better, Nicole. It's like a computer that had to have assembled itself, created electricity, plugged itself in, and then pushed itself on. It's like that. So um, what this is what makes life possible. Now, if you go to Psalm 104, it talks about uh, the creation. And in verses 6 through 9, it says this. You covered it with the deep as with the garment. The waters were standing above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the sound of your thunder, they hurried away. The mountains rose, the valleys sink down. This is talking about at the creation, before there was land. There was the water over it, okay? It says right here, you covered it with the deep as a garment. We're talking about the waters here. The waters were standing above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. The waters fled. What this is describing is the tectonic activity. The mountains, as, as, the, as, the, as the plates are, are hitting each other, they're forming the mountains, yep. and that is causing what we have here. And it says, it says exactly what it says. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place which you established for them. 
I mean, exactly what happened is exactly what's being described here. Now, we know that Genesis 1 doesn't describe everything that happened because in other places it tells us what God said that God said some things in creation that are not mentioned in Genesis 1. Right. Then also it describes in other areas of the Bible thing, how things happened in the creation that Genesis 1 doesn't mention. So we know that Genesis 1 isn't supposed to be a complete narrative or else the Bible would be lying. Okay, so, verses 11 through 13. Then God said that the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees on the earth, bearing fruit after their kind with seed in them, and it was so. Now, let me just interject here and say there's a lot of scientists going back and forth as to which one came first. Animal life, like, for instance, single-celled organisms, or plant life. They keep going back and forth, and I don't know if they'll ever figure it out. So, if you've heard... Something that, that, oh, this, the order here is wrong. Don't, don't put too much money into that. <laughs> the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them after their kind, and God saw that it was good. Verse 13, there was evening and there was morning a third day. So, um, the, the plants that it describes here are, are kind of interesting. It says here, um, uh, vegetation, plants yielding seed after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them. So it, it's it's talking about the start of plants, but it specifically mentions three things. The fruit with seed in them, that would be the fruit trees. Right. And then um, it also mentions uh, grass and herbs. Uh, the words translated here as vegetation and plants yielding seed after their kind, um, they're typically translated to mean herbs and grass, or grass and herbs in, in order that it appears. So the idea here is just that plants... Uh, got started 14 through 15 then god said let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to, get, and to give light on the earth and it was so now i want to kind of mention here mention here to this this doesn't mean that this is when god created the sun and the moon and the stars okay so let me just start there because okay we already said here on verse three that there was already light and at the beginning of verse 1, we already show, showed that, that that idea in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, that's an inclusive term. God created all of it. So we, we we talked about the way that this is actually talking about the Big Bang and God you know, putting the, putting the planets in their order, God forming the moon out of the earth, all that stuff is just summarized very briefly in verse 1. So this isn't putting things, things out of order. We know that the sun came before the earth, and, and it's absolutely not saying that. What it is saying, though, is... How do, how do I word this? The wording in the Hebrew doesn't necessitate creation, but it more of describes um, – how do, how do I want to say this? Uh, almost like an appointment. Uh, yeah, kind of like appointment. So in other words, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens. In other words, not necessarily that there weren't before, but rather let this be their reason. So the idea is more of God giving order – and stuff like that than anything. And once again, remember how how the sh the, the the what did I say? The perspective is changing. It started out in verse one, the global perspective. God creates everything, but then it zooms down into Earth, and and the rest of it is from the perspective of Earth. So it's not that Earth wasn't spinning around the sun at this point yet. It's that from the perspective of Earth, you were able to see something that wasn't there that you weren't able to see before. Now. Some people might say, well, okay, maybe the, the, the light from the sun and the stars is finally reaching back because it takes that, that long for the light to reach Earth. Yeah, that is possible. It is also possible that the rest of the clouds that were covering the Earth that we looked at before, that they have finished being going away, that this took time. Now, this would be necessary because, for instance, uh, uh, some birds need the stars to navigate. Um, a lot of – a lot of – well <laughs> – you you really can't have, you know, too many plants and stuff really coming around too much without having you know light and that kind of stuff. So that kind of raises a few a few concerns. Back up to verse twelve, trees bearing fruit with seed in them. Now we know that that those trees need light, right? So now you back up to verse three and it says, "Let there be light," and there was light. So we know that the trees were able to live because the sun was already shining on the trees. Okay, so that would mean by deduction, that verse 14 is not talking about the introduction of light where there was not light, right? Okay, so 
Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. God is God is putting things in order. He's He's giving things uh, meaning and that kind of stuff. The sky is being revealed more clearly. Um, it's also important to note how God kind of made things, you know, that He didn't have to just to make things for our benefit. Like for instance, uh, stars are, are are fantastic for finding your way along the sea. For instance, right. well, God didn't have to add that nice little touch. But it sure is nice that he did. <laughs> right. I know a lot of sailors who are very happy that God did. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, verses 16 through 19. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. This is not saying that he did it at this time. God had made. Okay, God had made the two great lights. And really it does allow for, for either kind of idea here. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He made the stars also. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. So what this means, oh, and God saw that it was good. So what this means is that when God created before, he created, he was creating things with purpose, even if the purpose wasn't revealed yet. That's kind of an important point. God created the sun and, and, and the moon and the stars with a reason. He didn't just create them because he was bored. He had a reason all along, but it wasn't revealed until all the way down here to, in this next section here. Um, another thing to note um, is that it says that uh, right here in verse 18, this is this is what what's called a um, uh, oh I forget what it's called. Basically, what it is 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 it's a reference to earlier to tell you that um, to clarify something. The Bible does this very frequently, and the wording here that it's trying to try emphasis to is found in 18, and to separate the light from the darkness. So if you go back to verse um, for God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. In that way, that that double wording, what it's trying to show is that this is what God had done back then. He did it for a reason. This is the reason revealed on day four. See, that that's that's the way it's doing that. Um, so we have here kind of like a summary statement. In verses twenty through twenty-five. Then God said that the waters teem with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth uh, in the open expanse of the heavens. God created the great sea monsters and every uh, living creature that moves, that which the waters formed after their kind, and every winged bird after its kind, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters uh, in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning, a fifth day. Um, well, let's keep going. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth after their kind, and it was so. God made the beasts of the earth after their kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps on the ground uh, after its kind. And God saw that it was good. This is a very, very surprising thing coming from such an ancient text, especially if we're assuming that it's not historical. Because we know that mammals were very late to the show. We know that, plant, that animals started uh, in the water first, and um, that's exactly what we see here. And it's just surprising that it got the order right if it wasn't historical. Doesn't that kind of seem like a little bit off to you? Uh -huh. um, also, remember, if somebody just invented this, why didn't they just say what we're all thinking? That it was all created in a single moment right. by God. Why wouldn't they have just said that yeah. if they're inventing it? Right. Why would they have gone to all the problem of saying that he did it in these seven different or six different segments of time? Why? Why complicate it? See, I mean, like, we're just left with a lot of questions if this is not from God. And then we have the question of, of where did this idea come from? Now, some people will tell you that Genesis 1 is basically um, just a, a, um, a copy of the Babylonian Enuma Elish, the creation uh, story from Babylon. That's very much so not true. If you read through it yourself, there are – I mean, first off, the Enuma Elish isn't even complete. So there's that. <laughs> Second off, a very small part of it is dedicated to the actual creation process. Um, the rest of it, it like goes off on a bunch of nonsense. So let's not get too carried away with the <laughs> similarities. Um, and I, like I already mentioned la uh, two weeks ago, there's no cosmic struggle. There's no gods fighting. God doesn't release sperm on the earth to raise up to, to raise up life. He, you don't see that happening. He just speaks and it happens. Um, you, you don't see this this big 
you know, conflict. You, you see everything where God has a plan for it all the way through the creation. It's not like just, well, I'm bored. What do we do now? Like, for instance, the gods in the other stories, people were an afterthought because they were too lazy. The gods were too lazy to do all the work, so they created man as an afterthought so they wouldn't have to do the work. Huh. We don't see that here. Right. Um, so life began in water, all life including beasts. Uh, uh, well, let me come back to that. Let me come back to that. Um, I wanted to. I think there was something else I wanted to say. Well, so we know from we know from science that 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 animal or uh, yeah animals came to came very quickly, um, shorter in a, in a shorter amount of time than they should have come, and uh, so that would fit in here. And eh, I guess I said enough about that a couple weeks ago though. Um, so okay. Uh, God creates all, all life, and here, if you notice, it says in verse 25, and made the beasts of the earth after their kind. This word translated beasts is usually translated carnivores. So that would mean that God created carnivores. They didn't evolve. And if that's the case, then God created the, created the earth with death. Death was a factor in, in earth before the fall. It was not sin that caused death. Sin caused spiritual death. There's a big difference. And if you read through Romans, it never actually says that people died physically. It's very it's very clearly talking about our spiritual separation from God. It's very clearly saying that. So let, let's remember to keep those things in perspective of what the Bible does and doesn't say. Um, okay, so... Well, and, and one, one thing that you've got to think about, too, is God put the tree of life in the garden, right? And, and they could have ate from it, right? Uh -huh. Right. What would be the need if there wasn't death? Right. 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 This is a very good point. Yeah. Very good point. Yes. And also another another thing that's 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 worth pointing out. Now we'll get to this when we get to in next next year, guys. We aren't gonna have another young adults until next year. Uh, uh, is they weren't forbidden to eat from the fruit of life from the tree of life either no. until they were kicked out of the garden. Right. Yeah. Remember that. So kind of an important point. I find this kind of weird that people think, well, that's just silly. It's just a myth. People scientists are now talking about ways of keeping people from dying wow. through either creating them into cybernetics kind of ideal or maybe or, through medicine or that kind of th yeah. thing and so it's like so you think that you can give people something that will make them never die and you don't believe that god could give them something that would make them never die huh. uh. how does that make sense because yeah. man did it, that, therefore it's possible. But if God did it, it's impossible. I mean, that doesn't uh, make sense. Uh, when you hold God to a higher standard than even, you know, is possible, it's like, like for instance, if God is real, he has to come right now into this building and say, hey, what's up, dude? Oh, he didn't. He's not real. What? 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 Like, that doesn't prove he's not uh, real. Uh, yeah. What? <laughs> anyways, anyways, I'm getting off topic. Uh, okay, so um, I could have sworn there was something else I wanted to mention in here along with the beasts. Um Mm. Creeping things here is is not a very good uh, translation. The idea here is more of um, don't think creeping things like bugs. Think creeping things like um, things animals that, that that wander. Like for instance, a deer, something that roams. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. If, more like snakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. usually what people think when they think of the word creeping thing. But there's a lot of thing words that are translated in the first part of Genesis. That aren't translated like that anywhere in the whole Bible. Oh. It's weird how they how how translators do the. It, it's just weird. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so then mammals are the last things to come, and humans, which we know are the last of the mammals to come, is exactly what it says here. So once again, an odd coincidence there. Um, so here, notice that it says that these animals are going to come after their kind. Yeah. Now, some people would say, "Ooh, ooh, ooh so." Is is God is God setting up the idea of evolution? Like he created mammals, for instance, and let them evolve into the other things from the uh, mammal, you know, uh, predecessor, you know, and then he created. You see what I mean? Like the different yeah, yeah, yeah. things, and then all the things were just variations of it. 
no, 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 no. That actually seems to be exactly what it's not saying. It, seem, it seems to, to be saying um, that each thing was mating after its own kind. Humans were mating humans. Deer were mating deer. Everything was mating its own kind. Right. That they weren't cross speciesing. Right. That can, see what I mean? Yeah. So if evolution did happen, it would have to be minor changes within the species itself that caused minor changes throughout the thousands and thousands of years. Because of very clearly it says after their kind. Um, okay, so uh, <clears throat> verses 26 through 31. Then God said, "Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let our um, uh, sorry, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth." Um, let God created the man in his own, own image, and um, in the image of God He created him. Male and female, he created him. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the bird of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Um, notice that he didn't actually um, tell him to uh, govern over the things in... Um, one of the things he left off. I forget which one it is. Fill the earth, subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea... The birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. No, that doesn't seem to be right. I I should have written it down because I can't think of it. Anyways, um, he breaks it down into the three into the three uh, things and seems to be real generalized terms. Uh, if you notice, it's a, it's a lot shortened uh, abbreviation than it, it like in the days it talked more of all the things that were in the water instead of just saying fish. For instance, it said. Um, where does it say? Um, where is it? Um, the things that are swarming it in the waters, and then it says the the beasts of the. Where does it say this? It, when it's talking about the things that are in the water. Hold on. That the waters teem with swarms of living creatures. Uh, birds fly over. God created the great sea monsters. Here it is. Great sea monsters. Um, every living creature that moves, the water swarmed, swarmed after their kind, every winged bird. So rather than saying all those things, it just has kind of a very simplified version here. It just says uh, the fish of the sea, birds of the sky, every living thing that moves on the earth. It doesn't talk about the creeping things or all that stuff. It's just a real simplified version. I really wish I would have written down what I was going to say, though. Anyways, so God created life cycles. Therefore, plants died and carnivores existed. Therefore, death existed. Um, so... So uh, one of the more interesting things that I've heard uh, was is something along the lines of this. If, if Eve came from Adam, this could not have been uh, – um, where, where is it? Right here. Uh, it would mean that um, she was Steve because woman's supposed to come first and the man comes from woman. So if God, you, God made a woman from a man, it would actually be a man. It, it's this whole thing. Well, here's the thing that, that they're really not taking into account. Um, <laughs> we're talking about God creating a human being. I don't think that he would be limited in how he could do these things. It also seems ridiculous to say that God would would create us from dirt. I don't under, I'm not saying that I understand everything in the Bible. I'm just saying I understand that God does things that doesn't seem possible. I don't know how or why, but that's that's what happens. So it's like, well, uh, it doesn't make sense that there was nothing and then there was everything. So I, you know, I, I, it seems like a very small thing to create man from the dust after God created the dust. Just throwing that out there. Right. Um, now, obviously, people have brought up the point that that it's some uh, uh, poetical language being used in that part where it says that man will return to the earth or to return to dust since he came from dust. Absolutely, I'm not I'm not disputing that at all. But that doesn't mean that God didn't create us from the dust, even though it's poetical. So let's just keep those things in mind. Um, so here's here's kind of a big point though. Um, if men, if humans did evolve, we got a serious problem here because Eve came from Adam, and it could not have happened through evolution. If it was through evolution, it would have had to, to be through gradual process of woman bearing slightly mutated, woman bearing slightly mutated, and, and these mutations going on long enough. So therefore, women would have had to have come first. So here, this is the strongest argument from the Bible that I can possibly think of to say that humans, regardless of whatever evolved or didn't evolve, humans could not have evolved, or this is completely bonk. So, anyways, um, 
Another thing is it, God took human material from Adam. He didn't necessarily take the same DNA. In other words, Eve wasn't necessarily a female clone of the male Adam. See what I mean? It could just simply be saying that, that God took the humanness of him and formed a woman. Because the word that is translated as rib um, is actually more of um, side or part. So God took from the side of Adam. Once again, that might seem, well, that's kind of a small point. It actually is a big point because the whole point of the story isn't about a rib. It's about God creating a woman for Adam, the idea of them mutually benefiting each other. See what I mean? I mean, if you think about all these different things. So God created Adam out of thin air. Couldn't he have done the same thing with Eve? Yes, but he chose to take from Adam. Why? Furthermore, why did he decide to take from the side of Adam? Couldn't he have taken from the foot of Adam? From the head of Adam? He took from the side. So, I mean, it seems like God's trying to teach us something here right. about women being next to us, next. not yeah. under us right. or over us. Seems like this is kind of trying to teach us something there, doesn't it? Yes. Um, another thing is the fact that God decided to take from Adam rather than just bring Eve out of nothing. I believe this is a point here. Um, oh, no, I didn't. I didn't write this one down. Um the, the fact that God decided to take from Adam to build Eve rather than creating Eve out of thin air, almost like he wanted Adam to understand that she was a part of him. You know what I mean? And in that, we kind of see a big lesson for marriage, especially that later on in this in this part, uh, he says about how man should leave, um, um, leave his mother and father and be joined to his uh, wife. Well, I, I don't know where it is, and I'm not going to waste the time looking for it. Um, so here's here's another thing. All babies start as girls, even through the though the genetics are coded for boys. So what I mean by that is at at conception, you're either XX or XY. Not denying that, but physically, we are all girls until the um, the testo testosterone starts to go into the body and all that stuff. And, at, and through that process, as the baby is gestating. The, the the testicles and stuff form so with that being said it really wouldn't be that big of an, a, a deal for god to say i mean take from that and form from, you see what i'm getting at here yes. it wouldn't be that big of an idea of a deal for god to take that and not make the testosterone kick in and make sure that it's an it's you know xx or xy according for adam and eve you see what i'm getting at here uh -huh. okay, maybe kind of see what i'm saying if i didn't say that 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 clearly, don't worry about it. I'll, I can explain it again later. Um, okay. So animals have souls, but humans are in the image of God. This is kind of an important point. Animals, especially if you look, um, the the more God creates, the more advanced the, the animals become. For instance, he first create the first life that he creates is our plants, and they really don't have that much to them. You see what I mean? Like they they don't really think and that kind of stuff. Then he creates things like fish and birds. And they're just not really the smartest of animals, you see what I mean? But then he gets to, like, the mammals and that kind of stuff. And people who, who have these kinds of, of, of animals or pets will, will tell you that, well, they're just a lot more complicated of an organism than a trout is. <laughs> right. Have you, ever, have you ever seen a trout do something that you think, wow, it, this trout is a very joyful trout? No, but when a dog does something, you're like, that's a very happy dog. Yeah. Why? You see what I mean? Like because that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is things yeah. kind of become more and more complicated as yeah. the as the higher life forms. Yeah. And with that being said, the Bible doesn't ever say that animals don't have souls. You can see their you can see their their distinction in in them. You know what I mean? Thief isn't the same as hope, no. or or tank isn't the same as uh, whatever your cat's name is. I don't know what angel. angel. It's you know tank isn't the same as angel. They have their own little personalities. They act differently. That they respond differently. Yeah. They very much so have. Now, am I saying that animals can be saved? No, animals cannot accept salvation. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but neither can they willfully sin. Right. See what I mean? An animal can do something it's not supposed to, and even feels, in a large part, shame and guilt, like we talked about with right. the, with the dogs. But that doesn't mean that like it doesn't have the consciousness to sin. Yes. See what I mean? Like a sin is is, is like this. Okay. God says, hey, don't kill Zach. And I say, hmm, I'm going to kill Zach. Yeah, Intentional sense. sin. A dog can't like...
sit there and and weigh the 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 the, the infinite expanse of the universe and the and the galaxies and think about now if I if I if I rip Zach's throat apart is this how will I sleep with myself. You know, dogs aren't able to, to yeah. think such sophisticated thoughts. Yeah. They're able to think the basic idea of guilt, which, which again is what I'm getting at. Animals do have that that idea of a soul, but humans are the only are the only of the created species that are made in the image of God. They're the only ones that have consciousness. They're the only ones that, who can be saved, including angels. Angels can't even be saved. And they're the only ones who have that free will. Now, what I mean by free will is this: Can a dog roam around the yard? Yeah. But you have to have a will in order to have free will. And dogs don't really have a will. People have a will. You know what I mean? Like, I will um, that I watch out for me as a human. There's something inside of me that's very um, selfish. Yeah. Dogs, for instance, don't necessarily have that. Oh. <laughs> Cats might. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> joking. <laughs> but my point being, um, the, the, so, so that takes us to the idea, so what does it mean to be made in the image of God? Um I believe I have that on the next slide. Okay, so let's go through this. Um, first off, they are told, uh, humans are told very carefully to take care of the earth and to multiply. Um, this is not a command. It's a blessing. When, she, when, when you read it, I'll, I'll read it to you, but it sounds different in English than what it's actually trying to say in the Hebrew. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Do you see what he just said? God blessed them. This is how he blessed them. Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then God said, Behold, I have given you, given you every plant yielding seed. We'll, we'll come back to that. But, okay, so here he's told to take care of the earth and multiply, but that's not his command. That's his blessing to people. You get to do this. Hooray for you. See what I mean? So, uh, how can anyone bring children into, into such a messed up world? People might say, well, because God commanded it, and God... God blessed us with that. We get to have kids. This is, it's not, oh, how could – you're such a bad person for bringing children into this evil world. Wh what? <laughs> like it's a blessing from God, and he, he actually told us that we could do it and that we should do it. And, uh, you know, th this is different. Um, so, okay. Then in verse 29 on down, Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth, and every tree which is fruit yielding seed, it shall be food for you. Oh, excuse me. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the sky, and to everything that moves on the earth, which is life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Now, I want to focus here on verse 30. It says, To every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the sky, I and to everything that moves on the earth which has life, I have given every green plant for food. This is once again where the translation will get you. There's often times in the Bible where it says all, and it doesn't mean all. This is a very confusing thing for people who are not familiar with what's going on here. For, I'll give you a couple examples. Number one, it says when Israel went and conquered Canaan that they killed everyone. They didn't kill everyone. When it says everyone, the idea is um, all the military forces that were opposed to them. There were still a lot of people there that were alive. There were still a lot of, I mean, this is something that the Bible shows itself. It even says, hey, there are still the people living here. There's still people living here. Well, I thought you just said this. Or I'll say it, they destroyed this city and completely burned it. And then you read a, a few verses later and it says that there's people living in it. What? See what I mean? That, that, that's, that's more of our problem in understanding it than it is the, the Bible. Um, another example is that it says that the flood covered over all the earth, and that's not really accurate. The Bible says itself that it didn't cover all the earth. And if you if you know what the word means – We'll get to this when we get to the flood. That's just two examples right there of how all doesn't mean all. It's more of our translation translates it wrong. Um, so eating meat, um, people come to this. Eating meat was allowed uh, is what allowed humans to evolve speech. Oh, boy, this is a complicated one, guys. First off, first off, that's not necessarily proven. Second off, that depends on whether humans evolved from those things or not. So let's let's keep those things in perspective too. You can't simply say because I believe in evolution, therefore meat allowed is what allowed humans to evolve into speaking animals. That just that doesn't that doesn't fit. You you still have to prove it scientifically, even if you believe in evolution. Right. Okay. So uh, then there's the issue that 
the verse isn't necessarily saying that God didn't give them animals to eat at this point. When it says in Genesis 9 that God did give them animals to eat, he's talking about the different animals. He's talking about – in. I don't have time to go there, and we'll go to there later, but he's talking about the animals such as the deer, the animals that you have to hunt for, not the domesticated ones like the cows. Right. And the idea there, he, he makes this makes this very clear by not only the words that he uses when he says that, but then also he says this, and they'll be, they're going to be afraid of you at that point. Why? Because you're hunting them. Have you ever been to a place that the animals aren't used to people? They don't know to be afraid. Have you ever been to places where they do are used to people? They're afraid. Why? Because what God said in Genesis chapter 9. Those animals that you're going to be starting to hunt now, the ones that you couldn't eat before, you can eat now, yeah, they're going to be afraid of you because you're hunting them. See, they could eat cows and stuff before, but cows don't – cows are kind of just stupid. Right. I don't know how else to say that. They're just stupid. They're just dumb. Yeah. They're just stupid. Um, so the idea of, of uh, people – of that – you really have a whole issue with evolution there, and I don't want to get too much into that. But this is not saying that humans were only vegetarians back then, Okay, so I just want to clarify that. It's not saying that. It's not commenting on it one way or another. Now, were people vegetarians back then? I don't know. It doesn't say. But it does say at this point that they were not eating like the deer and that kind of stuff. If they were eating meat, it was only cows. We, we know that from the word. Now, once again, I'll, we'll look at the words later. I don't want to get caught into uh, Hebrew semantics tonight. Um, and then the next thing is this also doesn't mean that every animal was eating from plants. Now, it's kind of misleading here because it says, And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the sky, and to everything that moves on the earth which has life, I have given every green plant for food. The idea here that's translated everything that moves on the earth is, and also in the beginning, every beast of the earth is – there's a good possibility it's actually just talking about the cows and the deer and that kind of stuff yeah. that, 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 that eat that. Now, why would God specify that? Well, we'll get to that at a different time. I, we really just don't have time to talk about that tonight. But either way, it's not necessarily saying that, saying that carnivores were not created at this point. But however, if you do believe that carnivores were not at this point and people were not eating meat at this point and that kind of stuff – Basically, you're saying that you do believe in evolution. That's something that you really cannot get around because that would mean that carnivores would have to evolve and humans would have to evolve the ability to eat meat. So you have a lot of issues there that you have to deal with. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'll let you deal with it in your own way. Um, I already talked about creeping things be, being herd animals. I already talked about that, so we'll move on. So what does it mean that we are made in his image? Okay, now check this out. It's not talking about an appearance. Because I mean, for instance, God doesn't have genitalia. Okay, I mean, let's let's put two and two together here. This should be obvious, but there's some people who think that it's like when it talks about God's hand or something that it's talking about like you know God's literal physical hand. Well, how come I can't see God by looking through a telescope? Is like, oh, jeez. <laughs> Without getting into all that, no, God does not not we're not like God in physical appearance. Um. When – in the ancient world, when it talked – when it used languages like this, it was actually talking about idols and how idols were made in the image of the god and how the idols represented the god and how the idol would – would um, – you would worship the idol as so as to worship the god. So does that kind of make sense? Right. It was kind of like the god's representative uh, by worshiping the idol. So from that seems how the Bible uses the same same wording for us. It seems like what it's trying to say is we are God's representative. We are the idol of God. In other words, God's glory is shown through us. Does that kind of make sense? And Paul builds on this idea too. He says that we are his ambassadors, his representative. This is exactly what Paul was saying. Um, and so it seems like this is this is what it means when it says that we are made in the image of God, that God put us on the earth to govern the earth in his stead. Does that kind of make sense? Right. Which makes sense because he said, hey – Go forth, multiply, and subdue the earth. It kind of makes sense that he's saying, hey, yeah, you are to be governing over the earth in my stead. Uh, God's work is done through us. So a lot of times people say, well, why is God letting this happen? Rather, we should be asking ourselves, why are we allowing this to happen? Yeah. Because we are God's hands and feet. We should be doing something about it. You know what I mean? We shouldn't just be handing off the buck to some, someone else and blaming God for all of our problems. Right. Let's do something, and God will bless us and do it with us too. Um so it is up to us, although God works through us, absolutely. And I'm not trying to diminish what God uh, what God does. I'm not trying to do that at all. But when he tells us to do something, we ought to do it. 
Um, it also means that we can act like him. Uh, for instance, we can have conscience. We can conscious. We are conscious. Jeez. Uh, and we are discerning of how to say conscious, for instance. Um, <laughs> but those kinds of traits um, that, that, that God has. Um, however, not through divine sex. God didn't have sex to make us. We don't have sex with God. We don't have sex in symbolically with God like the kings did with the priests. We, we, no, 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 no. So there, there is obviously a limit here to how much in the image of God we are. For instance, we are not all powerful. We're not all knowing. Right. <laughs> all these things. All these things. Right. Um, created to be. We are. We are created to be in submission to God. This is a very important point because if we were made to be in His image. Surely the idol is not of great, uh, 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 greater than, than the God it represents, right? Therefore, surely the created thing is not better than the one who created it, right? Doesn't that just make sense? Right. That just kind of makes sense. So we were, we were created to be in submission to God. When God created us in the image of God, that's also a saying of dependence. To be in the image of God requires for us to do these things, be his re representative, act like him, uh, do his work. But that by necessity means that we're in submission to God. So we are created for a purpose by a living God, absolutely. Um, now, some people see a lot of other things in being made in the image of God, like, for instance, um, authority and those kinds of things. I don't necessarily not see it, but I don't necessarily see it. Um, yes, God could be trying to teach us about authority by making us in, in his image, you know, husband, wife, kid, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Absolutely, that that could be something that he's trying to trying to equate. But in Genesis one, we don't see Jesus and the Holy Spirit fleshed out as as clearly as in the New Testament. And so for that reason, I kind of doubt that interpretation because it seems like what he's actually trying to say is about how we are his representative. Because why would he go on in the very next part to say, therefore, go fill the earth and subdue it? Why would he bother saying that if he didn't mean this? That doesn't make sense. So, you know, there's that. Um, obviously, there's some other things that, 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 that we could say about that, but that's the basic idea. So, in summation, being made in the image of God is you have worth and value just by being you. That's the, that's the, the head and the tail of the whole idea there. Um, any questions or any comments about anything that we looked at tonight? I know some of the stuff might have been a little bit confusing. With the Ice Age, uh -huh. the only thing I have real questions about is when it would have taken place. Okay. It, just with the creation and up until now, like, when it would have taken place. Okay. And it so, never really, like, hit until... I've never questioned it until we started going through this. So are you, are you asking when in the Bible it happened? Right. Okay. Okay. Like, I know when science says it happened. Right. Like, like, I will uh, we'll get into that when we get into the genealogies and into the uh, uh, Tower of Babel and through and there. Um, we will answer. That's something that I'm actually really, really did want to look because I had that same question. Like, so it's like what, okay, well, yeah. we science says, right? But when does right? When did yeah? And I did notice too. Uh, my dad and I were watching Ancient Aliens the other day, and they <laughs> did start talking about the flood because they were talking about the pyramids. Uh huh. And they showed, like, a short clip on there, and they were talking about the flood in the whole world. And my, and my dad's just like, that's wrong. Like, what does that have to do with the pyramids? Because they were trying to prove that the pyramids were used as a power source, and that oh, they filled okay. up with water. A power to... source for what? The aliens? The aliens? The or aliens. Is that what we're talking about? Ancient yeah. aliens is Ancient. such a weird show. It is. It, it is. really is. It's so interesting. Uh. It's so, so interesting. But that they were filling up with water, that they have these... They just were able to look at them more. Uh -huh. And they have these small... Well, they're not small. But vessels in them that fill up with water and, like, emit vibrations. And that the flood had basically caused them to collapse. Huh. On one of the pyramids. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways. 
This is why I don't get cable, guys. They, they, they have they have more airtime than they have ideas. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, so yes, we, we will definitely look at that. Um, absolutely. And we'll look at um, how the earth can be millions of years old if the Bible doesn't say that. Well, we'll look at that. Right. We'll look at that. Um, any other questions or comments? I stopped dusting my house because I'm letting the family visit my ancestors. Oh, <laughs> the dust. <laughs> That's funny. I I, I get you. Uh, how long how long did you have that that uh, that joke in your head? Since we talked about the dust. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs>